for my art project, I've decided to look into pop art, uh, specifically Andy Warhol. So, most famously known as Andy Warhol, um, So Andy Warhol was a successful magazine and ad illustrator who became a leading artist around the 60s um, during the pop art movement. He ventured into a wide variety of different forms of art, including performance art, filmmaking, video art, writing, uh, but was kind of known for his controversial blurred lines between fine art and mainstream aesthetic. Uh, he was born Andrew Warhalla on August 6, 1928 in Pittsburgh, which is actually where I live currently, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Born Andrew Warhalla on August 6, 1928 in the neighborhood of Oakland in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Warhol's parents were... Slovakian immigrants. His father was a construction worker and his mother Julia was an embroiderer. At the age of eight, Warhol, con Warhol contracted... At the age of eight, Warhol developed a rare and fatal disease. At the age of eight, Warhol developed a rare and sometimes fatal disease of the nervous system that left him bedridden for several months. And it was during these months while he was sick in bed that his mother, who's an artist herself, gave him his first drawing lessons, which eventually became his favorite childhood pastime. He was an avid fan of movies when his mom brought him a camera at the age of nine, he took up photography, developing film in the basement. Warhol attended elementary school in Pittsburgh and took free art classes offered at Carnegie Institute, which is now the Carnegie Museum of Art in Pittsburgh. He later enrolled at the Carnegie Institute of Technology to study pictorial design. And it was at this college that he was met with some opposition by professors who did not always approve of his unique style. He really pushed art boundaries while he was in school. In fact, he had to do extra work over the course to remain good academic standing so that he could graduate and eventually moved to New York City. So, the Andy Warhol Museum is in Pittsburgh. It's seven floors tall. It's actually one of the largest museums in North America dedicated to one artist, which I think shows just how influential Andy Warhol was. Um, and speaks to his amazing work within the pop art movement and when you go to the Andy Warhol Museum in Pittsburgh um, you'll find a collection of art and archives that are dedicated to Warhol's work and his life. His early work is very interesting to me a lot of it is um, these simple thin line drawings um, of cats, angels, shoes. These were some of the things that Andy Warhol favored as subjects early on in his work. These are some of these are some of the objects that Andy Warhol favored as a subject in his work before he got into pop art. These depictions were later used in these depictions were actually images that he would trace from the newspaper and as he became more skilled he was contracted to illustrate several books um, 
which have been published. Here are a few other photos of his work. These are photos that I have personally taken from my visit to the Andy Warhol Museum. So, as you can see, they look quite different from some of the work that he's known for. Now, getting into Now, when Andy Warhol graduated from college in 1949, he moved to New York City to pursue a career as a commercial artist. It was also at this time that he dropped the A at the end of his last name, Warhola, and shortened his name to Andy Warhol. He won frequent... Andy Warhol Andy Warhol went on to become one of the most successful commercial artists of the 1950s. He won frequent awards for his uniquely whimsical style, using his own blotted line technique and rubber stamps to create his drawings. As a fine artist, he met great success and was thrilled by the cultural life of New York City. He would travel, um, but made him... Andy Warhol would begin traveling around this time, which made him realize that his art ambitions were beyond commercial art, and he began to move toward the iconic style we know today. People will describe pop art as popular, mass-produced, witty, glamorous. And Warhol himself once said, once you got pop, you could never see a sign the same way again. And once you thought pop, you could never see America the same way again. Warhol's other faming Warhol's other famous pop paintings depicted Coca-Cola bottles, vacuum cleaners, hamburgers. Here, um, a few photos that I saw at the Andy Warhol Museum that are quite well known include the Campbell tomato soup can, Elvis Presley, and Andy Warhol's banana depiction. Andy Warhol also painted celebrity portraits in vivid, garnish colors. Some of his most famous subjects include Marilyn Monroe, Elizabeth Taylor, and Mick Jagger. These portraits gained fame and notori... These portraits gained a lot of... These portraits gained a lot of fame. And Warhol began to receive hundreds of commissions of portraits from socialites and celebrities following. His portrait of eight Elvises eventually resold for a hundred million dollars in 2008, making it one of the most valuable paintings in world history. When visiting the Andy Warhol Museum, something that stands out is the number of pictures and art. Something that stands out when visiting the Andy Warhol Museum is the archives of friends and influence that helped shape Andy Warhol. Tally Brown was um, 
when I visited, there was a exhibit for Tally Brown, who was a flamboyant performer, classically trained vocalist and actress who became what could be known as a Warhol superstar. She would visit Andy Warhol's famous silver factory um, and was featured in filming projects that Andy Warhol would work on. Andy was an avid, Andy Warhol was known for collecting not only objects, but curating his group of friends and gravitated towards unique, talented, indiv- <laughs> gravitated towards unique, talented individuals. Brown's talent and powerful stage presence made her a natural fit for Warhol's circle, and she went on to appear in several of his movies. The photo depicted in this slide is a self-portrait that Andy Warhol took of himself in his later life. He began to explore different forms of media, such as video art, and got into publishing. Valerie Jean Solanus was a aspiring writer who entered the silver factory where Andy would do a lot of his work and shot him. She turned herself in afterwards and was treated for schizophrenia and Andy Warhol was hospitalized for weeks to recover. After his brush with death in 1968, Warhol became more reserved and concerned about his life. He dealt with financial problems and this really motivated him to start the Warhol Diaries, which is the event This helped inspire Warhol to continue to explore these other forms of media, including video art, producing more than 60 films during his career. Some of his most famous films include Sleep, which depicts poet John, depicts a poet sleeping for six hours straight and Eat, which shows a man eating a mushroom for 45 minutes. Andy Warhol passed away on February 22, 1987, after dealing with chronic gallbladder issues, (coughs) after suffering from chronic gallbladder issues. Warhol left a few items to his family, but for the most part, He donated his estate to the arts. And Andy Warhol's life was cut short at the age of 58 years old. When visiting the archive, when visiting the Andy Warhol Museum, one of my favorite exhibits was the archive room which is unfortunately blocked off with glass but you can see inside that there are so many resources and so much content 
that they have for Andy Warhol and it was really exciting to see all that lives within the Andy Warhol Museum. The influence of Andy Warhol on the pop art movement is something that will continue to live on. Warhol's life and work satirized and celebrated materiality and celebrity. On one hand, his paintings of distorted brand images and celebrity faces could be read as a critique of what he viewed as culture, what he viewed as a culture obsessed with money and celebrity. While on the other hand, Warhol's focus on consumer goods and pop culture icons, as well as his own taste for money and fame, suggests a life in celebration of the very aspects of American culture that his work criticized. Warhol spoke to this apparent contradiction between his life and work in his book, The Philosophy of Andy Warhol, writing that making money is art and working is art and good business is the best art. I have a photo of his most iconic Marilyn Monroe acrylic painting. I have a photo of his most iconic Marilyn Monroe art piece on this slide next to an artwork titled Andy Warhol, which was painted by an artist with acrylic painting. And the artist was Richard Barinchia. And we can see that he has really captured the essence of Andy Warhol through imagery and color. And here are my references that I used throughout the presentation um, and the research process. So that is everything.